treadmill motor shaft is 17 millimeters. This is a pulley that I just went out and bought real cheap. It's a two inch pulley, but the shaft on it is five eighths. So we need to open up that hole just a little tiny bit to fit onto the treadmill. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do right now. All right, I got the machine pulled out of the way off the wall so you, you could get a better shot at this. I've got my motor back here. I got a set of blocks, a uh, set of bearing blocks here. And that's going to ride with a 12 inch pulley. Then I'm going to connect up to another set of pulleys. Okay, this setup has a slot in the bottom which will be used to move this back and forth so I can get tension on it. To force that tension, I have this piece of all thread right here. There was a bolt hole that I discovered when I was cleaning this up, so this piece of all thread will allow me to create that tension with this with this nut that will push against this steel plate. I drilled a hole in the steel plate strictly as a guide to keep this from pushing left or right or up or down so it'll just follow inside that hole. It doesn't actually screw tight to it. also have an idler pulley here that's for this set of pulleys which will be my next set that I'll be putting together right now. So you can see here this is going to want to push everywhere so that just needs to fit inside that slot like so. I can use this nut to tighten it up. I have a second nut as well to keep this trapped so that it doesn't uh, back out. We go from a reduction of two and a half to twelve to three to twelve on this way. So the idler will move into position here. It will be tightened up down below right here. Okay, all of our pulleys are hooked up. We're just not tightened up at all. First thing that I do is I need to set this and move it in that direction. To do that, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this. So here I am, just finger tight right now, getting that tension on, on that belt. So the sensor has been placed right there, hopefully you can see it, and the magnet just barely makes it past. Hopefully you can see the magnet, right there is the magnet attached to the spindle, and that just makes its way on by. I also have another cheap thing, just a uh, little portable digital tack. You put the little sticker, the reflective sticker on the rotating part and then you can just kind of shoot the laser at it. <clears throat> so that's my tack. We have now have power. We're reading about 750 7.53 for the motor. Now, of course, we can take this one up. It's pretty loud. 150 
27 on the tack. The motor. It's boogieing. 4,000 at the motor. And that gives us 158 at the spindle. There, there's a direct shut off. Let's see if I can bring it right back to its starting where I left off. And under normal circumstances, I would have to turn the dial back to zero and then turn it back up. But I should be able to just press this and it takes me right back. It should take me right back. We'll see. Perfect. Love it. This is freaking awesome. There's full out. That's all the way. That's maxed out. That's 272 at the spindle. Obviously, the motor is going crazy. 7,000. Well, I personally don't like the look of it with the wood. I am a little concerned about having it too many pulleys in the system. I don't know, really, I could use your feedback on what would be alternatives or possibly a better solution. I don't own a welder, so hang that up right away. I, it's, it's in my wish list. If you've got a welder and you want to give it to me, sure, go ahead, but uh, I don't have one right now. It works. It's great. I've got a range of up to, you saw it, what was it, like 280 or something like that on the tack down to like 40, 20 something. Well, actually down to about 28 RPMs. So I have never used the machine. So we'll find out whether or not this setup will work. And if it doesn't work, I'll make changes. I'll improve it. Anyway, I hope you like this. See ya!